Network Entertainment. This episode may cover sensitive topics like sexual assault, domestic violence, and stalking, which could be triggering. While we recognize the challenges discontent may pose, we advise you to prioritize your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched. PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. The West Philippine Sea is one of the most conflicted areas in the world, with various countries such as the Philippines, China, Vietnam, and others in the Asia-Pacific claiming territorial rights in the disputed region. Given the heightened tensions between Manila and Beijing, we decided to look for incidents that fit our show's genre. We found one that happened in 2013 under the Aquino administration. On May 9, 2013, a 65-year-old Taiwanese fisherman named Huang Shi Cheng, who was aboard a fishing boat, was shot dead by members of the Philippine Coast Guard aboard a surveillance ship. The incident happened in the Balintang Channel, where the Philippines and Taiwan's exclusive economic zones overlap. At the time, the incident strained the diplomatic relations between Manila and Taipei, affecting the livelihood of overseas Filipino workers in Taiwan. You are listening to the PH Murder Stories podcast. This is the 11th episode of Season 4. Many thanks to Bingo Plus for sponsoring this episode. fisherman was killed when the Philippine Coast Guard fired at a Taiwanese fishing boat off Batanes. Philippine officials say the foreign vessel tried to ram a Bureau of Fisheries vessel. Eleven Coast Guard personnel involved in the incident have been relieved pending investigation. Taiwan is upset over the incident and it criticizes what it calls the Philippine government's use of force, saying the Taiwanese vessel wasn't even armed. Under no circumstances can Philippine vessels attack our vessels. We now hope the Philippine government punishes the people who are responsible, apologizes to our government, and compensates the fishing company, the boat, and family of the victim, apart from conducting an immediate internal investigation. They were forced to fire the shots because the fishing vessel attempted to ram them. If they are ramming our vessel, then but they are small boats. The, the safety of our personnel is uh, also put into danger. Taiwanese investigators have already seen the video of the May 9 shooting incident near Patanes that left a Taiwanese fisherman dead. The two-hour video was taken by the Philippine Coast Guard, which insists they fired at the Taiwanese boat in self-defense. Both the Taiwanese team and the NBI refused to comment further. This investigation is still ongoing. So the other detail, we, I'm sorry, I have no comment. So you've seen the video? Yes, I think it's helpful. The NBI says the Taiwanese investigators already finished their ballistics examination on the firearms used by the Philippine Coast Guard. Their next tasks, examining the Coast Guard ship and interviewing its crew. They can uh, make measurements if they want. They can make forensics if they want. It will depend on what they want to do. If uh, they will be given the opportunity to inspect the vessel. The Taiwanese team arrived in Manila on Monday as part of an agreement between the Philippines and Taiwan to hold a parallel probe into the shooting incident. Eight NBI agents are also in Taiwan for a similar investigation. On May 9, 2013, a Taiwanese fishing boat, the Kwa Ta Sing, number 28, was in the Balintang Channel a disputed region between Taiwan and the Philippines. The boat was manned by three Taiwanese and an Indonesian, one of whom was Wang Shi Cheng. 
a 65-year-old Taiwanese fisherman. The Philippine Coast Guard spotted the fishing boat aboard the surveillance ship. They claimed that they acted in self-defense when they chased and opened fire at the fishing boat, alleging that the boat tried to ram their vessel. However, the Taiwanese crew insisted that their boat came under attack and was fired on without provocation. The boat was riddled with at least 59 bullet holes, mainly on the deck, and the bullets had come from assault rifles. Amid the chaos, a bullet hit Huang Shi Cheng in the neck, leading to his unfortunate demise. The death of Taiwanese fisherman Huang Shi Cheng, who was shot by the Philippine Coast Guard in the disputed waters of the Balintang Channel on May 9, 2013, triggered a significant reaction in Taiwan. The incident led to widespread public anger towards Manila over the shooting. Hundreds of Taiwanese rallied in protest, with some even resorting to burning the Philippine flag in a display of their outrage. The Taiwanese government, led by then-President Ma ying condemned the Philippine government over the attack. President Ma described the shooting as very brutal and cold-blooded and warned that his country would consider sanctions against the Philippines if the demands were not met. Taiwan demanded the following from the Philippines, a formal apology, the speeding up of the investigation into Huang's death, punishment of the perpetrators, payment of compensation to the fisherman's family, and talks over fishing rights in the disputed area. Taiwan also threatened to send the Philippines' representative back to Manila if the Philippines did not respond within 72 hours. In addition to these demands, Taiwan imposed sanctions on the Philippines, including stopping the issuance of visas to some 16,000 Filipinos seeking jobs in Taiwan. This move left over 16,000 Filipinos working in Taiwan temporarily jobless after Huang Shi Cheng's death. Taiwan also conducted a two-day safety and rescue drill with its naval and coast guard forces near the waters where the incident occurred. This was seen as a show of force and a demonstration of Taiwan's commitment to protecting its fishermen. The Philippine Coast Guard initially denied having any ship in the vicinity of the incident involving the shooting of Taiwanese fisherman Huang Shi Chang. However, they later admitted that their personnel had opened fire. They claimed that they acted in self-defense, alleging that the Taiwanese fishing boat tried to ram their vessel. The Coast Guard personnel involved in the incident admitted to having fired their firearms at the Taiwanese fishing boat where Huang Shi Cheng was aboard. Despite these claims, the National Bureau of Investigation later suggested that the Coast Guard personnel could have violated their own rules of engagement as their investigation uncovered that the video of the incident did not support the Coast Guard's claim that they fired in self-defense after the small fishing boat tried to ram their patrol craft. This led President Aquino III to send Amadeo Perez, the chairman of the Manila Economic and Cultural Office in Taiwan at the time, to offer an apology on behalf of the Filipino people for the death of the 65-year-old fisherman. The family of a Taiwanese fisherman who lost his life in an attack by a Philippine patrol boat in May finally got the apology it had wanted on Thursday. Manila's top point man for Taiwan traveled to southern Taiwan to deliver the apology, hoping to bring the incidents that has soured bilateral ties to an end. Three months after the shooting incident, the family of the dead fisherman received this official apology from the Philippine envoy. I have been authorized by President Benigno Simeon C. Aquino III to personally convey the President and the Filipino people deep regret and apology. Responding to the envoy's apology and the Philippines' decision to indict eight officers implicated in the shooting on homicide charges, the victim's family said it could accept Manila's moves. Because in Philippine law, there is no such thing as non-premeditated murder. So you indicted people on homicide charges. That's pretty much all I hoped for. 
As for compensation, the family's lawyer would not disclose the amount discussed. But the family remains insistent that any conditions on a settlement should be negotiated on a country-to-country -country basis. <laughs> At Thursday's press conference, the dead fisherman's daughter, Hong Siqian, bowed deeply to represent her family in thanking those who helped deal with the case. And she praised the efforts of President Ma ying and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She also hoped that the incident that took her father's life would never be repeated. After overwhelming evidence that points toward the members of the Philippine Coast Guard being the perpetrators in this incident, the Department of Justice sought justice for the shooting of Huang Shi Cheng. It filed homicide charges against the eight crew members of the Philippine Coast Guard who played a role in the international incident. The eight Philippine Coast Guard personnel that were charged were Commander Aaron Enriquez de la Cruz, Seaman First Class Edrando Quiapo Aguila Seaman First Class Melvin Aguilar Bendo II Seaman First Class Andy Gebronario Golfo Seaman First Class Sonny Galang Masangkay Seaman First Class Henry Baco Solomon Seaman Second Class Nikki Reynold Aurelio and Petty Officer 2 Richard Fernandez Corpus in 2014, a Batanes court issued warrants of arrest against the 8th Philippine Coast Guard or PCG personnel charged with homicide over Huang Shi Cheng's death. The bail was set at 40,000 pesos for the temporary liberty of the 8 suspects. These 8 PCG personnel admitted to having fired their firearms at the Taiwanese fishing boat where Huang Shi Cheng was aboard. In addition to the homicide charges, obstruction of justice charges were also filed against Commander de la Cruz and Seaman First Class Bendo II before the Cacayan Municipal Trial Court for allegedly preparing and submitting a falsified monthly gunnery report related to the incident. The accused personnel appealed before the Department of Justice to have their homicide charges dropped for lack of probable cause. They argued that their actions were done in self-defense and were consistent with the regular performance of their legal duty. The suspects also argued that the death of Huang Shi Cheng is yet to be established as the executive report of the NBI failed to produce a death certificate despite various major media outlets, both local and international, have reported on the death of the victim and even featuring the grief of his family. Despite these outrageous claims, the court proceedings continued and the Philippine Coast Guard personnel were eventually found guilty in 2019. They were handed prison sentences of between 8 and 14 years. The suspects were also each ordered to pay 50,000 pesos as civil indemnity and another 50,000 pesos as moral damages to the victim's family. Hi there, my name is Earl and I'm the host of Philippine Campfire Stories. After this episode that you're listening to, baka naman gusto mong mag-check ng mga horror stories sa mga folklore and urban legends na nangyayari sa Pilipinas. Mga true horror stories shared in a manner na hindi ka naman matatakot pero ma-entertain ka. Go ahead and check out Philippine Campfire Stories and we have over 200 episodes just waiting for you. See you there! Despite the diplomatic catastrophe caused by the eight Philippine Coast Guard members during this incident, the Aquino administration's efforts to resolve this issue and its ability to bring justice to Hua Shi Chang's family and the people of Taiwan are very commendable. Fast forward to today, where tensions are rising between Manila and Beijing in the West Philippine Sea. Causing several incidents in the past year, we can only hope both countries can resolve and improve diplomatic ties. None of us here wants to have a war. Therefore, let us urge our leaders to pursue and utilize diplomacy by all means. Thank you. 
for listening to PH Murder Stories. If you like this episode, give us a 5-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can also support our show on Patreon. Any amount you donate would benefit our team to keep doing what we love, which is to provide more true crime episodes for our listeners. Link in the description. For further updates from our show, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at PH Murder Stories. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at PH Murder Stories. The opinions of podcast creators, hosts, and guests are not necessarily reflective of the official stance of the Pod Network Entertainment, its hosts, or other network programs. The content created by the people behind the podcast is personal and not meant to harm any religion, ethnicity, group, organization, company, or individual.